Greetings everyone and welcome to Bounty Train, a new short series for the channel. Now this game was developed by Corby Games and published by Daedalic Entertainment, uh, the same publishers of uh, The Long Journey Home. And, well, it's, it's a bit of an indie simulation game with a strong leaning towards strategy. Now as you can probably already tell but the title alone, much less the uh, splash screen, this is a game that's got a fair bit to do about trains. I've played it for about an hour, two hours just to get the handle of the controls but we're going to be starting a new game and uh, jumping into this. Oh, I actually quite enjoy this game and I'm hoping that you will as well. We'll be playing through the campaign though. During the campaign you will play through a storyline helping the main character Walter Reed to fight the intrigues of his competitors in the railroad business. You can, of course, free, uh, play a free game, which uh, just lets you play the game. So if you uh, really enjoy the game, finish the campaign, you can just play free play and just continue to build up in, in more or less any way you want. Uh, we'll be playing on normal difficulty, just for the sake of it, but uh, there's... <laughs> Baby mode, easy mode, normal mode, hard mode, impossible mode. Wow, okay, difficult 250%, that is actually quite a lot. I'm not sure how they would do that, probably the economy would be a lot harder because this game has a strong sort of economic management um, kind of theme running throughout. Well, let's just uh, jump into this. Ah, uh, now that's not really what I would have considered a train, but um, that's that's because I, I, was, I was born after it was invented, I suppose. My lord, that, that does look like, a, like a, a less than safe contraption to be stood on. But fair enough. All right. Okay. So this is the uh, the first town. We will unlock a lot more different things that we can do in the towns as we progress through the campaign. But first and foremost, let's talk with Jeremiah. Good afternoon, Walter. My name is Jeremiah Sullivan Black. I used to take care of your father's legal concerns. I'm the one who addressed you regarding his unfortunate demise. Uh, we've got zero reputation with Jeremiah, it seems. Uh, we'll ask about my father. Your notice said nothing of what exactly happened to my father. I wish to know the details. I myself do not yet know all the facts, but I suspect his grim fate was a consequence of his trade. He was murdered on the very same railroad he spent so much effort to construct. You and I have a long struggle ahead of us to finish what he started. Uh, okay, I'll ask about the railroad company. You mentioned the National Pacific Railroad Company. Tell me what all this actually means. Your father was a stockholder of the National Pacific Railroad Company, the same company that's building the first transcontinental railroad intended to connect the east and west coasts of the United States. It's a major government project, correct? Yes, and according to your father's vision, the railroad should be short and relatively inexpensive to construct. However, his associate, Mr. Cornelius uh, uh, Tilburner, uh, sorry, I was completely distracted by how awesome the name Cornelius is. Plans to construct a lengthier route to bloat expenses and secure greater financing from the government. Mm, that seems logical from a business standpoint. The company would receive substantial profit, wouldn't it? True, but if the railroad construction takes the longer route, it shall traverse Indian lands, inevitably causing confrontations and bringing death and suffering to many people. I'm taking talking hundreds or even thousands of victims. I require your help to avert this. Well then, let's not waste time. Uh, then let us hurry. What do you need from me right now? I appreciate your business sense. Right now I need you to deliver a cargo to Mr. Quincy, who is clerk in Boston. He will help us with the licensing we need to travel to Boston. New, uh, the Boston to New York line. In exchange, I promise to help him with the, the shipping. As for the Portland Boston license, I've already taken care of it. Okay, now, in the beginning of the game, we're going to have a lot of this kind of just opening up the main uh, abilities in the game before we can really get down and start doing our own thing. Uh, but we'll probably get through that in this episode. Um, when I get to Boston, where do I find Mr. Quincy? That's, that'll be fairly obvious. Uh, am I correct to assume that I have to transport the cargo using the Rattler train standing at the station? Yes, you are correct. It may not be the most powerful locomotive in the world, but I trust it will serve long enough. I have also managed to procure a small cargo carriage for this enterprise. My father ran an enormous railroad enterprise. Why are there difficulties with carriages and engines? Should we not have access to more powerful and robust locomotives? Upon your father's death, his former associates conspired to secure their grip on his stock. I had no choice but to freeze his assets to buy us enough time to settle these legal matters so we could confront this band of traitors. 
We'll have to be content with what we have. Okay. Uh, very well. I will get started right away. All right. Okay. So we've already got a bunch of cargo in there. It looks like a load of cotton. There'll be little piece of people here and there talking. There is actual time in this game, and places will have opening hours and closing hours and things like that. Um, there's a couple of different buildings you can click on, and there'll be more later, but I'll cover them as we actually um, learn about them in the campaign. Okay, so, since we already have a license, we can just unlock that straight away. Normally, you'd have to purchase these. Uh, for example, uh, well, I can't do it right now, at all, uh, but you could perhaps just unlock this for 150. There are various quests that will unlock them, and sometimes it's really worthwhile holding out for those because wow, do they cut down the price if not get rid of the price altogether? All right, let's uh, head down to Boston. Now, you can change various things like the amount of coal you use. You can also uh, auto visit, so that means if I go there, I'll go into Boston, or you can turn that off and you'll go past. Um, you can also buy coal, which means you'll restock your your tinder. I'll turn that off for now while we've not got much money, because coal is expensive. And we'll also travel the slowest, uh, as slow as we can to conserve coal. So we'll conserve 0 0.2 units of coal by moving slowly along this route. It won't realistically make any difference to how fast they it transitions, but it'll just be that time will move faster as you're moving, moving along the route. All right, Walter, I hope the delivery from Mr. Quincy is going well. In the meantime, uh, time, I've been speaking with the clerk from the city of Hall of Portland. I have assured him that you are a person he can count on, and the city is now prepared to offer you some commercial contracts. This should help us to earn money for our venture. If you fail it, it will be expensive on, uh, of your good reputation. It uh, will be at the expense of your good reputation, rather. And they may no longer consider your services. Do not let me down. Very well. Okay, so we want to go to the city hall right now to finish our first trip. Uh, but it won't be open until later, and that's partially because we went with this. Well, no, actually, the slow route wouldn't really have affected this, I don't think, too much. But we can advance some time. There we go. Iris whiskey, the best whiskey. Yep. Fair enough. Right, are you Mr. Quincy? Mr. Jeremiah Black instructed me to deliver some goods to you. The cargo has arrived. Feel free to unload it. Splendid! My friend Jeremiah has not let me down. You don't seem to be from around here, young man. I haven't seen your face in the city. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm Walter Reed. My name is Walter Reed. My father used to hold a major stock in National Pacific Railroad, and I'm here to find out what happened to him. Ah, yes. I heard about this grave occurrence. Please accept my condolences. I hope you shall be able to figure it all out. In order to help you, I can provide you with Boston's cargo contracts. They're quite lucrative. Sounds great, thank you. Also, Mr. Black asked me to fetch the railway license you agreed to give us. Ah, sure. Here it is the license to travel between Boston and New York. Mr. Black only has to sign it, and then you can use this specific railroad. Send him my regards, won't you? Thank you for your assistance. Right, okay, so... We have... We've got to arrive in Portland and give the license to Jeremiah so he can sign it. But before we do, there's a couple of things we can do here. We can go to the hospital. We don't need to yet. Right now, all you've seen is us moving the train back and forth, but things can happen. If I click on Walter, you'll notice that I can move Walter around in the train, and that's for a reason. There are, like, um, real-time strategy moments where the train might be accosted, and we have to try and fend off the, uh, the attackers. And so our characters actually have a bunch of skills, and they also have inventory, like weapons, things like that. Um, Walter is actually a guns uh, fighter, so he's pretty good with revolvers, but you, there's lots of different combat skills. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go to the City Hall and see if they've got anything to take. Oh, no, everything is to New York. Oh, that's a bit of a shame. Okay, never mind then. Nothing for us to do right now but go back to Portland. Now, Portland, we've got a zero reputation there. We've got a five reputation in Boston. We're effectively still unknowns, though. Once again, we're going to travel with the least amount of coal so that we don't have to uh, buy too much more. All right, okay, give the license to Jeremiah. There we go. Is everything okay with the cargo delivery? I sure is, and I got a license to the Boston New York Railroad. Good. Now, the way to New York is open. We need to get there together, and believe me, riding in a cargo carriage is not the way. Time to get money for a passenger carriage. Uh, that shouldn't be a problem. I'm not going to ask how I can earn money, because it's 
fairly easy. Right, okay, so first and foremost, I'm going to wait until morning so that we can check out what we have here. Deliver three units of food to New York. Can't do that one, unfortunately. As you get higher reputations, you'll... And also access to the different towns in, in some cases, or... Um, certain types of carriages on your train, then you'll be able to take on the different um, options there. But for the time being, let's have a look. How much coal do we have? We've got 2.3 tons of coal. That's more than enough. This place currently has weapons and alcohol to sell. If we look at alcohol, we can see that Boston has... Um, it's not a particularly good buy price, honestly. We could buy from Boston for 57 and sell to Boston for 51. Um, well, actually, no. That being said, yeah, we, we've got a pretty good markup there. Uh, what about weapons, though? Um, not too bad, but much smaller profit margin. Also, it's illegal in Boston, so we there are ways that you can um, take illegal goods around, but generally at the beginning, before you've upgraded your carriage with concealable compartments, probably not a good idea to sell an illegal good in the station where it's illegal. You can try to just go through it without being noticed to sell it somewhere else, but I would strongly recommend not trying. Uh, right, I would like to buy all three of these, please. That's all I can afford. And we're going to head down to Boston to try and make us a bit of money. Currently, we have got to make uh, $400. That shouldn't be too terribly bad. Here's our little summary here. We made a net loss, but uh, we're just about to uh, undo that loss. So let's head into the market straight away. And sell all of our alcohol. We'll make a hefty bit of profit there. Very nice indeed. Uh, right, now we could have a look at what's in the city hall. Uh, we'd have to wait a little bit longer. Not too long though. Uh, right, what have we got? We've got, no, still three units of fur. Same contract as last time. Okay. Well, they've got some jewellery. Um, Portland, it's not a great profit, honestly, so I'm not that keen on it. What about tobacco? Um, not an amazing profit either. Oil? Oil isn't too bad. Now, what I've noticed between this run and the past one is that the different towns, they seem to be randomly generating what they produce and what they consume. Um, previously, Portland was all about the oil. And Boston had pretty good um, prices because it consumed oil a lot. But it seems that that's changed around here. Additionally, it seems that uh, we have a difference on uh, on steel as well. Steel was not usually something that, that uh, Boston had. Okay, well, we'll grab steel. Now, steel is very heavy. And you do need to worry about the weight because the weight will affect how well your train can move. How quickly it can cover the distance, things like that. Uh, we could get a little bit of tobacco to top things up. Or jewellery. Jewellery would be mighty expensive, though. I th uh, we can go for it, I suppose. Sure. Uh, we can buy one thing of jewellery. And then a couple of things of tobacco. There we go. Not too terribly bad. Walter has got a level up, though. And uh, at this point, we can choose a new perk. We can gain ad additional agility. Reduces range rep and reload time. And increases evasion. Um, we could have Kung Fu, which will increase the character's chance to evade ranged attacks by 1%, uh, percent, that is. Or increase the Gunslinger level. Now, that would increase a the rate of fire by a certain amount. And also would add... A little bit of extra time to the Gunslinger active ability, which is Gunfight. Um, agility is a base stat. I think we're going to go with Agility, actually, yeah. Okay. We'll increase the reload speed. Currently, we are... Just by having the Gunslinger level, we've just got Accuracy. If we get the next level, we will add 
40% Radio Fire onto that ability, which would, probably would be useful for us to do, but I think uh, getting some base stats is also pretty pretty good right now. Uh, right, okay, well, let's head back. Now, you'll notice some people have got blue text above their, their names. That means that they're a passenger. White names mean that they are someone with a quest. For example, we can talk with Joseph here. Do you know what this is? Well, do you? Uh, stack of paper? I don't know what you're pointing at. Not just any papers. Gaius met, uh, medicated paper. It's my invention. Set to change the way we go about our sanitary business. Say, you wouldn't happen to own a locomotive, would you? Uh, stop beating around the bush, old man. What do you want? That's not very nice. I need someone to deliver a shipment of my latest invention to Cincinnati. If it proves popular there, my paper's fame will spread across the country. I'll pay you well for your trouble if you get it there in a timely fashion. What do you say? Uh, maybe some other time. Uh, so that's a that's an interesting uh, quest. <laughs> Medicated paper. Hmm. Right, well, we're going to be heading back, but you can uh, click on the station to have a look at who's uh, available as passengers. We don't yet have a passenger wagon, so we can't really take passengers, uh, but for now, it should be fine. And since we're not doing any quests, it really doesn't matter how long it takes us to get to our destination. Once you start getting quests, there'll be a deadline on them, and failing to get the, the goods or people there in time will be bad. Right, let's talk to Jeremiah. Uh, oh yes, we've still got to get the, the money first. Let me uh, go and offload my goods. Now, there's been so many times where I have failed to remember to uh, take the goods out of my cargo. It's quite frustrating, honestly, and it just sits there forever. Right, and these as well. There we go. Not too terribly bad. We've made a, a bit of money there. We've got 1.6 tons, so I'll buy uh, an extra one ton of coal there it doesn't seem to care about the the decimal points i've found which is why i don't like having auto coal on because if you like you've used that point two coal it'll buy a whole extra ton of coal to replace it uh, which is kind of annoying right so it's jeremiah here's the money for the carriage uh good now we need to get a passenger carriage a small one should do the job hold on where can i get this carriage each city has a depot where you can buy different carriages and locomotives. If your train is broken, it can be repaired at the depot as well. Thank you. Right, if we head over here, we can see what they have available. There's a couple of different things. Uh, a caboose there, a, a larger caboose, so we can have uh, gunmen or basically guards on the train. Passenger carriage, an extra small cargo carriage. We need this passenger carriage for this particular quest, but by and large, I have found that cargo is by far the better thing to haul for money. Um, to the point that I'll often leave the passenger carriage. Like, you can just drop this off here and carry on your way. This is this is yours. You haven't sold it. To sell it, you have to go in and actually sell it. And everything can be upgraded as well, which is actually uh, a pretty neat little, little thing. If we have a look at this train, what can we do here? Um, I can increase the uh, tender and increase the amount of coal that it can store. I can improve the firebox, uh, probably possible to reduce coal consumption. I can increase engine power, gives additional horsepower to the locomotive. It increases the max load weight and max speed of your train as well. How much would that cost? 140 to do that, and engine power would go up by what? What's our current engine? Oh, it should go up by quite a lot. Uh, the booster apply high quality materials to the booster mechanism will increase its duration. Now this is more for the uh, um, real-time strategy element when you're under attack, because you actually have to have someone managing the train and, and, and uh, setting the speed to go around obstacles and stuff. It's pretty fun, but we'll uh, get to that soon. But uh, we'll pop this one back down there for now. Okay, let's uh, head across. All right, hello, uh, Jeremiah again. Here's the passenger carriage. Good, I almost thought we would have to walk there. Hurry now, let's get to New York, as you say, Mr. Black. Uh, right, very well, but uh, do we have anything we can do on the way? Uh, yeah, we can take some food over there. Uh, minimum reputation, important, minus 20. Cargo space left, three, we've got that. I'll have seven days, three hours to get it there. We'll get 240 money. Portland's attitude will increase by seven, and New York's attitude will increase by four. Uh, sorry, five, and we'll get 40 experience, which is quite nice. But this is what we will lose if we fail. So, yeah, you know, don't take tasks unless you're fairly certain you can do them. There we go, we'll grab that one. Now then, let's uh, go and head out and check how long it's going to take us to get to New York. Now, we do have all the necessary documents. There we go. So, we've got seven days to get down there. 
We can make it in five days and six hours at the slowest possible speed. Uh, let's head into Boston because we've still got two spaces on our cargo wagon. We might actually be able to buy something else to take with us. Um, and given, you know what, there's not that, well, it's almost a day's difference actually. For how much coal? 0.2 extra coal. Yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead. We'll, uh, we'll make our way down there. Clear it off the completed quests. And we'll pop into Boston and just see if anyone... Yeah, two units of food to New York. There we go. So we can uh, top that up a little further as well. I accept. Yes. There we are. It needs one day to get there, though. Which is uh, going to be a little bit of a tricky one. So if we head back out... I really should have double-checked that first. One day and 18 hours. Ooh, let me just double-check this. One day and 23 hours. Yeah, we've got enough time to get there. But it's going to be a close one. And usually what you should do is check this first and then see what's available, how long it'll take. Come out and then click to see how long it'll take you to get there. And then add a few extra hours, depending on how heavy the cargo is. If this was steel, it would add a lot more time, but food is a lot lighter than steel. Bear that in mind that if you check without the cargo on your on your train, you're not going to get a, a truly accurate estimate. But uh, let's let's head down there. It, we'll have enough time. It's fine. There we go. Good day. Are you going to New York? I have an urgent letter to my relative who lives in New York. Can you deliver it to him? Uh, yeah, okay. Give me a letter. Uh, this task is urgent, and you have almost no time left to reach the station. Go as fast as you can to finish this. Good luck. Uh, oh, all oh, right. Okay. So now, now here we are. Uh, please start loading the coal. There we go. And I'm just gonna pump the the power level to max. Uh, there we are. Now this is like a little speed thing. Uh, can we go? There we are. We're starting to get enough pressure now. Uh, right. Obviously, you don't want it to be in the the uh, red area there because that's kind of bad. Let's slow it down just a little bit. We want it to be about there. That's fine. Now, this boost temporarily increases train speed has a cooldown. Can I can I use that? Yes. Go. Oh. Okay. Okay. Slow slow down just just a little bit. Don't be super duper bad. I don't want the pressure to explode the train. Uh, right, there we are. Use a brake for emergency stops. Okay. Use the indicator that shows our distance. Oh, no, I need to slow down. I need to slow down like a lot. Lot. Slow down. Slow down. Because we're about to hit a uh, corner. And we need the corner to be... We need to take the corner at, at a certain speed. Uh, how fast are we going right now? Where does it say how fast we're going? Uh, okay, we can we can go a little bit faster. There we are. I was looking at everywhere but the right place. Come on, just a little bit more. That's fine as long as we take it at, at at or below that speed that it indicated. We're fine. There we are. We should be okay. We've got 160 meters to go. We've got this whistle that can scare off horses. Perhaps if we're we're being uh, attacked, we can we can blow the whistle to to uh, startle the horses a little bit. And generally, any as you can see, the the sort of firing lines, it actually does matter where they're stood. Like out here, you have an amazing, amazing firing lines. But uh, from windows, you know, you've got a little bit of cover and everything like that as well. Uh, to start moving again, pull up to the power level. I already did. Uh, victory! There we go. We got some extra experience as well. There we are. We only had a few hours left on arriving here. Please tell me that I can actually drop this off. Oh, if this had been closed, we probably would have failed. But uh, here we are. I am here considering to deliver three units of food to New York. I've got the goods, and I hope you're ready to pay me. There we go. And I'm also delivering another two units of food, because you guys are really hungry. There we go. Have a nice day. There we are. Fantastic. Um, give the message to Jack Goodman. Uh, Jack, there we are. Do you have a letter for me? Yes, take it. <laughs> there we go. Take it now. Uh, hello, Jeremiah. Uh, that's can I talk to you? Ah, there we are. 
Now I need to go and get the paperwork in order. Meanwhile, I would strongly recommend visiting the post office to subscribe to the local newspaper. New York is a very big and important city, and this subscription will give us crucial insight into the city's economy. I guess if you strongly recommend this, I should oblige. Very well. Now that's uh, in every um, stop. You can go to the post office and subscribe to the newspaper. It's a monthly subscription of a certain amount. Uh, it'll be down to you to decide how important that particular place is. As long as you've visited a place in, a, in the reasonably um, near past, then odds are the prices haven't changed much. So if you're quite active in a very small area, then don't worry too much about the subscriptions. But across very long distances, these actually become indispensable. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll grab this one subscription. That'll be $18 a month. Um, we won't really talk more about it. it. Basically, it means that from the map, you can get a up-to-date information on the market prices. Likewise, you can see in here, you can see how long ago we saw these prices. Um, but for, for example, now New York, no matter where we are, we'll have up to date by the second um, information. Let's go ahead and drop off, uh, sorry, buy another piece of coal there. Now, New York, what are, what are your prices for steel? Your prices are really good for steel. And Portland's prices are atrocious for steel, which means we make an awful lot of profit. But steel is, well, it's very expensive. Let's put it that way. Uh, medicine, let's have a look at that. Um, we wouldn't make too much, but we could trade it with, with Boston. Um, tools, actually, they're pretty good. They're very nice. Uh, what else have we got? We've got cloth. It's actually, again, a, a nice, nice price difference there. Uh, you could spend time to actually look at this properly and, and work out, well, you know, which of these, because I'm just looking at it at the moment just for the, the sake of brevity, is is B greater than A, if so, then it's a decent enough trade. But there are ones that are going to be much better based on, on how much you could buy of it. Right now, we can only buy five of any one thing, so typically speaking, the bigger the price difference, the better. But if you were dealing with a only a small amount of capital or you had a very great amount of cargo capacity then things might change a, a little bit um so bear that in mind uh tobacco it's only 11 to buy here that's actually not too bad steel steel is probably one of the better ones the the price difference between here and portland is massive cotton not particularly a good one but let's go and see what city hall has to office. Uh, actually, we can... Oh, get our shares from Jeremiah. Everything is in order. Here's your 4% of the company shares, along with some money. Walter. Uh, Walter. Now, we need to find your brothers and sisters. They have shares as well. We have a powerful and ruthless opponent. His name is Cornelius, and he will try everything to get the shares before we do, because his name is awesome. Now you have your shares and your locomotive. Is there anything else I can do for you? Uh, do you know where my siblings are? Robert was here a few weeks ago. He was going to Buffalo. You could try to catch him there. Okay. Who else owns shares in National Pacific? Your brothers and your sister, Pearl, own four each. So brothers, I've got at least two. Several robber barons, including Mr. Tilbudnar, own shares as well. In addition, 30% of the shares are distributed amongst various smaller owners. Who's this Mr. Cornelius? Til uh, til uh, Tilliband. Trilliband. I've... Have I been saying the name wrong all this time? Till Birdner. What? Wait, uh, what? Um, I'm confused. Different people, clearly. Uh, Till Birdner, Walter. Till. Oh, right. I was saying the name wrong. Ah! <laughs> uh, it's it's funny because it's actually accurate to how I was dealing with that in real life. Uh, I'm I'm really bad. <laughs> Here's a very powerful a businessman on the outside and a heartless criminal on the inside. He also owns shares of the National Pacific Railroad Company and wants to get full control of it. You need to hurry if you want to beat him to 51% of the shares. Thank you, I need to go. Okay, so he's got 6% of the shares so far. We've only got 4%. Wow, he does look a little bit rough. Okay, well, uh, is the West as wild as I said it. Hey, Jack, uh, thank you for the quick delivery. Uh, you're welcome. Anyone with a white name, Potentially, oh, that's actually our, our. I'm not sure I want to talk with you. Uh, Sandro and Ephra, uh, Ephraim are uh, people that we can recruit. 
Let's have a look. $275. Are you interested in my skills? Tell me more about yourself. Uh, you're, you've actually got a uh, skill in firefighting. That's actually quite nice. Skill extinguishes speed and reduces damage from fires. Okay. Uh, I'm not interested right now. Let's have a look at Ephraim. Like that hat. But you are super expensive. There's no way I could possibly afford you right now. But let's have a look. You've got a, a rifle. Okay. Um, nice, actually. I think I may uh, try to uh, hire you if I get enough money. Uh, we don't yet have a caboose, so it doesn't matter. We would need a caboose first. That's a gigantic caboose, my lord. Uh, we've got a large passenger carriage. We have got also a very large cargo wagon. Now, honestly, cargo, again, is where the money's at, in my opinion. Uh, right, well, let's have a look at what you've got. Four units of cotton to Portland. Uh, four units of cotton to Utica. Uh, two units of tobacco to Washington. Three units of food to Portland. Uh, I'm not sure which yet. You want to go to Pittsburgh? I can't take you there yet. So, let's see how much steel we can get. We can get five pieces, but our wagon would be way too heavy. We can take four, and it'll be just light enough. Okay, I'll take all of that. Um, given that we've got 408 left, let's see about upgrading the horsepower on our locomotive. I'll take 140. I think that is well worth it. Upgrade. And 170 afterwards? Yes, I would like this very much. It would make our train very, very fast. So there we go. Uh, it does, could do with a little bit of a, a top-up on, on health, but that's fine. We should be able to carry the last item of steel now. There we go. Yep. Perfect. Right, we're heading off to Portland then. Let's head up here. It's going to take us... If we go full bore, it'll take most of our coal and take five days. Or we can use hardly any coal at all and do it in eight days. I'm fine with that, honestly. It's not a problem. As I said, the train tends to move across the map at the same speed regardless. It's just how fast time is passing as you're making the trip. Hello, Portland. Let's see if the prices are still good. Bump. Yes. Yes, the prices are very good. Thank you. Right, we need to obtain a caboose, hire a train guard, and arrive in Buffalo. That can wait for a little bit. I would like to uh, get a couple more things first. Certainly, I would like a little bit of coal. Uh, yeah, we'll just get one. Now... We've got food here, but let's actually check on the the quest that we've got. Nothing, actually. Uh, oh, minimum reputation in Portland. Uh, we do not have the minimum reputation required. That is a shame. Are there any passengers who need to go anyway? Uh, you need to go to uh, Utica, not somewhere that I want to go right now. That is a bit of a shame. Actually, we'll go to the market first and see what we're going to be trading. So, you've got tools here. That is not a good... Well, actually, it might not be a terrible one to trade in Boston. Uh, you do have... We could take jewellery down to New York. Uh, I'm not super keen on that one. Alcohol is probably one of the, the better ones that we can do here. We've also... What on earth is that? Furs. Ah, okay. Um, no, not, not any particularly good prices there. Food? No, not good either. I guess it's going to be alcohol then, honestly, and we're going to be selling it. We'll get a decent enough price in Boston, frankly, so let's just grab all the alcohol we can. Now, you'll notice it's very fragile. It's also very, very flammable. These things matter if you start getting shot, uh, obviously. Uh, but you can armor the cargo wagon and things like that, but right now I'm a little bit more concerned with just upgrading our locomotive. Um, let's see, we could increase the amount of fuel that we can take. Uh, high durability, technical improvements applied to the locomotive and carriages, enhance durability and reduce the chance of malfunctions during the trip. That's actually quite nice. Armor and increased fire resistance. But the main thing for us is the improved firebox. I'd like to uh, reduce coal consumption if we can. So we'll go all the way up with that. There we go. 
Uh, we're not going to worry too much about increasing the uh, amount of coal that we can bring along for the time being. I think we're doing okay. We're not making those sorts of trips which need that much coal yet. Uh, Alright. Let's go ahead. And we should have... I was a little bit worried there. In the depot you can't see the cargo. I said, no, did I not buy it before I upgraded? I was sure I bought it first. No, no, we're fine. We're fine. Right, okay, so if we go down to Boston, we're now only going to use 0 0.3 uh, units of coal, despite how heavy our train is at this point, which I'm actually pretty happy with. So let's uh, head on down there. There we go. Now then, let's quickly go and offload this cargo. Make a, a little bit of profit there. And now... Is anyone going anywhere I can get to? Uh, someone's going to New York. They want to be there in four days and 14 hours. So it's a fairly easy one, that. How about this city? Deliver two units of food to New York? Sure, that's fine with me. Supply run. We could bring fur here. And they'd be willing to pay quite a lot, actually. And we'd get a, quite a, a hefty um, boost in reputation. Um... Minimum reputation in Boston, minus 60. There's quite often things that you can do, even if you've got a very strong negative reputation, and that's how you would build up your reputation if something went horribly wrong and you failed bunches of quests. Um, but you can complete that first. You can bring the first here, then accept it, then immediately complete it, which I would recommend for those ones, because then there's very little risk of failure. Uh, okay, we'll take, you, uh, we'll take the food to New York. We've got five days left on that. And we'll also grab a passenger for New York as well. Now, they may want to bring along some passenger seats. They don't always have luggage. Um, so you don't always have to leave space for that. But sometimes they do. So it's always best to check before you make, make any great plans. Harriet, if you could go in the chill out in the uh, passenger carriage. Uh, we could have a look at... Oh, it's the... Uh, is the other fella, the, the amazing dude, gone? Ah, Scallywags. Not that we could hire him yet anyway, because we haven't got the caboose. We could probably buy it at this point, but I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. We mostly just want to get some cash behind us. New York's got a decent price on jewelry, and so we could take that down there. It's also got a reasonable price on oil as well, but uh, I think we're going to go for the, the jewelry instead. Uh, I always do that. I always try to drag it from across there, but no, no, you need to drag it from here. Production rate, they make one jewelry a week. Indicates the profit of the trade. Uh, it's not a great profit, whereas this one is a very good profit. Still, I'm going to say that the jewelry is going to be better for us because we'll make the money in a much faster, faster period of time. Okay, let's head down to New York. Now, it'll take us two days and ten hours to get there on the lowest setting, and we'll use very, very little coal at all, and that is perfectly fine. Since we've upgraded our, our train a little bit, it's actually really helping out. Okay, right, first and foremost, uh, I well, that one is completed straight away because we've just delivered them here. Let's go and uh, trade the jewellery. Don't trade away the stuff that you brought down. You can do that. The game won't stop you, and it sucks. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. Uh, there we go. I am here to deliver the food. There we go. Now, there's quite a few things that you'd like me to take to uh, Portland, which I could definitely do. Uh, let's also see if perhaps we can get one of the cabooses. Uh, I'm really tempted for that, though. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Uh, we don't need need anything amazing right now we could just get away with a small um caboose just for this one well we'll bring you along and yeah i think that's that's fine 280 is not a problem let's actually have a look at what we can upgrade in this though uh, we can just upgrade the armor. Each additional layer of, layer of armor makes the carriage of a locomotive more resistant to damage caused by weapons and higher durability uh, Everything has wear and tear. You'll notice that certain things like have no odds of having a malfunction. Depending on how far it's travelled, that that chance goes up. So at that point, you really want to start uh, just getting um, the upgrades to the mechanical components. Now, our train is going to be a lot more heavy now as a result of this. 
So there we go. Now we've got to hire a train guard. That's the next step. And you are 100% the one that I want, except that there's now Andrew. Let's have a look at you, Andrew. Uh, you've got a pistol. You've also got a uh, wooden club. You're a pretty strong melee um, fighter. Uh, Sun's enemies for a short duration. Deals additional damage at higher levels. Okay. Now, when you're when you're being attacked, you can either stop the train and have everyone fight, or you can just keep keep trying to to go. And eventually, you'll outrun the enemies. So, I'm not a huge fan of the uh, the melee fighters myself. But we're going to be getting uh, Mr. Park here. There you go, Mr. Park. Uh, you can you can hang out in the in the cargo wagon. I think that's the best place for you. All right, so we got Portland food, uh, cotton to Portland, five days. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, we'll, we'll accept this one. There we go. There we are, loads of bales of cotton. Do we have any people wanting to go over there? No, we do not. That is quite a shame. Quite a shame. I do have some steel, which is almost certainly going to be better in Portland. So I'll grab one unit of steel. Oh, this is going to make this this train heavy, uh, but hopefully we're going to be able to make quite quite a, a bit of profit on this particular trip. So we want to go straight to Portland. We'll go straight through Boston. We won't even stop. And it's going to take us five days and nine hours to get there currently. Five days and seventeen hours there, so that's fine. We can we can go with the at the lower setting. It's not going to be a problem. But I'm going to increase it to uh, 0.8. We'll get there just a little bit sooner. And then I'll be able to just buy a, a nice even two tons of coal as well. There we are. I wasn't sure there if we were going to get attacked or not. Okay, so all we need to do is talk with the clerk. Oh. Uh, hello, Walter. I've made an acquaintance who may help us with the license for the Buffalo Utica Railroad. He wants $170 for it. Let me know if you think this is a good price. I'll be staying in uh, Utica for the next 25 days. Yours faithfully. Uh, time left, 25 days. Uh, sure, okay. Obtain 170. I've already got that. So, that's actually pretty good. Um, tasks. Can I, can I see the map first? I mean, I'm not paying this out yet, but... Uh, Okay, let's have a quick look at what that would cost normally. So, to go down there, it would cost... I don't have a license. I'd like to buy one. Uh, sale of license has been suspended. I don't know why exactly. All I know is that you cannot buy one right now. Oh, okay. So, we would have to get that one anyway. The cost of the one to... Okay, this is fine. We can easily afford it as is. So, I'm going to just open up that railroad. But before we forget, let's uh, head back in here and complete this quest. So, we need to wait for the... Oh, no. We don't need to wait for the morning. They're, they're still open. Fantastic. There we go. Marvellous. We have completed that one. Perfect. 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 There we go. Made a, a little bit of money. We're up to 14 reputation here now. Uh, let's head over to the market as well. We can drop off the steel uh, for a nice bit of profit there as well. So there we go. I think that's uh, that's enough for us to wrap up this episode. In the next one, we're going to see if there are any uh, trips, any people who want to go to um, Utica. Or, is it is it Utica uh, or Utisa? I'm not sure. I've never heard that, that the name of that particular town ever pronounced. I'm, I'm sure that after this, I will, I will quickly pop onto Google, find out how it's pronounced, and then realize I've, I've been a massive moron this whole episode. Either way, though, pretty happy with what we've done. We've got a bit of money in the bank, we've got a decently upgraded locomotive, and we are ready and set to head on with the story quest in the next episode. All we need to do is arrive here, speak with Jeremiah, and then we should be able to go all the way to Buffalo. Right, so so that's going to be it for me. I do hope you've enjoyed them. We'll be joining me for the next. And as ever, remember to leave a like if you liked and sub if you haven't. And of course, if you're interested in seeing more uh, Bounty Train in the future, then do leave me a comment down below. But until next time, do take care, everyone.